chapter 22 and verse 21. Hi, and welcome to It's Time for a Transformation. I am the Apostle Sharon Shearer of Transformation Life Ministries, along with my husband, the Bishop Gary L. Shearer. And we would like to welcome you to another segment of It's Time for a Transformation. You can reach out to us and give us a call at area code 513-289-2217. We would love to hear from you. If you'd like to become a covenant member of Transformation Life Ministries, visit us at our website, transformationlifeministries.com. That's transformation without the S, Transformation Life transformationlifeministries.com. Or simply go to SharonShear.com. Or email me directly at info at Sharon Shearer. That's S-H-E-A-R-E-R. Info at Sharon com. We'd love to hear from you. Give us a call, 513-289-2217. And we just want you to know that our mission at Transformation Life Ministries is to transform the world one soul at a time by the renewing of the mind through the preached gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If we reach that one soul, it's all worth it. Now tune in with us today when we hear a word from our Bishop Gary L. Shearer. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible reads, are we there? And Balaam, we're going to read a few verses. We're going to read the 34, so you can remain seated if you like. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way, and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. He whipped her and made her go the way he wanted to go. But the angel of the Lord stood in the path of the vineyards. A wall being on this side and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself into the wall and crushed Balaam's feet against the wall. And he beat her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam. And Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote and beat the ass with his staff. And the Lord opened the mouth, and the Lord opened the mouth of the ass. And she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee that thy house beat me these three times? And, ba and ba Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me. I would there were a sword in my hand, for now if I had a sword, I would kill you. And the ass said unto Balaam, Hey, am I not thy ass upon which thou hast written ever since I was thine, yours until this day? Was I ever want to do anything unto you? And Balaam said to the ass, No. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thy ass these three times? Why did you beat the donkey these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee because thy way is perverse before the Lord. And the ass saw me and turned from me these three times. 
unless she had turned from me, surely now I had slain thee and saved her alive. And the lamb said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now, therefore, if it displeased thee, I will get me back again. You may be seated. Wow, wow, wow. Yes, yes. Wow, wow, wow. Here we have Balaam riding upon his ass, which is a donkey, children. He's riding, and he's trying to go someplace. And the ass sees an angel of the Lord standing in front of him with a sword. And the angel turns away to the side, and the man beats the donkey to get him to go the way he's trying to go. And then once again, the angel pops up in the next place. And the donkey sees him, and he tries to climb up a wall to get away from the angel of the Lord and smashes the rider's foot up against the wall. Then the third time, the angel appeared before him, and the donkey didn't have nowhere to go to the left or to the right, so he just falls to the ground. And that's when the man, Balaam's eyes were open. How many of us know that when the enemy comes up against us, that the Almighty God, the Holy Spirit, will lift up a standard against them? Come on, minister. Huh? Stick with me. Many of us think that God it's for us. Many of us think that God is on our side many times when actually he's against us. I'm going somewhere with this. Stick with me. You see, the prophet Balaam was like many of us who have been gifted by God to be able to see things in the spirit world. He was a prophet. And once solely operated for God. See, you can have gifts of the Spirit and fall out of God's grace. Huh? I'm going somewhere. See, to be able to boast that our eyes have been opened and that we have seen visions of the Almighty God, we can do that. It's okay. If you're serving the Lord. But when you get to a place. To where. You have got so caught up. In your stuff. That you forget who you're working for. Amen. This is what happened. To the prophet Balaam. Amen. Balaam. Was one of those prophets who boasted. About his God given ability. His ability to see into the spirit world. Huh? I told you that many think that God is on their side when he's really not on their side. That's the case with Balaam. Stick with me. Here is Balaam, a great renowned seer, known from far and wide. That's why they went to get him. Used to be a prophet of God, still a prophet, but not a prophet of God, mind you. Not anymore. He don't know that. So if he was a great prophet, he would have saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road. But he wasn't seeing the vision as clear as he thought he was. He wasn't as great as he thought he was. If he was, he would have saw the angel of the Lord. He is a prophet, isn't he? He is a seer, isn't he? Hmm? Many of us have God and his holy angels standing right in front of us with a sword and we don't even see him. Angel of God standing right directly in front of you getting ready to take you out with a sword in his hand. And I don't think the sword looks like this one. With a sword in his hand, ready to take you out. Amen. 
And you so caught up in your own mess. Man of God, woman of God, I'm all this and I'm all that. Stand up so I can prophesy to you. Let me tell you what the Lord say. I'm going to show you this and I'm going to show you that. But the angel of God standing in front of you can really take you out. Oh yeah, we going somewhere. We going somewhere. Uh huh. Huh? We going somewhere. Is it okay if we go deep this morning? Mm -hmm. See, somebody gonna get cut this morning. But it's a good cut. I'm glad you asked. We're gonna put some weight on this thing. And I'm hoping that it's gonna open somebody's eyes. So you can see the angel of the Lord standing in front of you, waiting to take you out. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the angel of God is getting ready to take somebody out this very minute. Because you done got so caught up in your own stuff. You done got so puffed up in the Lord. You think you're really somebody that you can't even see through the forest. You can't even see through the forest because of trees and they're right there in front of you. And you can't see it. You cannot see the pink elephant in the room. Because you all that in the bag of tricks. Hmm? You don't have a clue. You think because you're a child of the most high that you slid into home play. You think because you saved. You think because you done did a few things. That you got the green light. You think you done slid in safe. You've been doing this thing for a while, haven't you? Huh? You've been working for the Lord for a while, so now all of a sudden you think you're safe. I'm here to let you know this morning that you're not safe. You're getting ready to die, and you don't even know it. I hope you're taking notes. Because I'm getting ready to take you somewhere. I'm getting ready to show you and me that you could possibly be one of these people that the angel of the Lord is standing to in front of with that sword in his hand. Huh? Which brings us to the title of our sermon this morning. Write this down. The dumb ass. That's the title this morning. The, the dumb ass. Look to your neighbor to the left. And say the dumb ass. The dumb ass. Now look to your neighbor on the right. Look. And say the dumb ass. The dumb ass. Hmm? I better put some weight on this. I know I'm going somewhere. I better put some weight on here. In the book of Romans, it talks about the for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. I'm talking about people of God operating and calling it. God's will, and it ain't God's will. Come on now. See, you can get off track, caught up in your own stuff. Make it plain. But there's one problem with that. Long ago, God said something that still holds true to this day. See, God is a God that cannot and will not lie. God said in the book of Malachi that he will rebuke the devourer on your behalf. Yes, he will. You pay his tithes. Right? He can't lie. Yeah, God says that he will bless them. That's what he told to Abraham. Mm -hmm. We see to Abraham. He said, I'm going to bless them that bless you. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to curse them that curse you. Come on. He didn't say people of the world. No, see, he didn't say I'm talking about the people of the world that's cursing you. Because we know the people of the world can't bless you. So he must be talking about saints. God is a God that don't lie. So in other words, you're talking about if a saint is trying to curse one of the people of God, God said, I'm going to curse them to curse you. What you say? See, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about that angel. Standing in front of somebody with that sword in his hand. Because I got the bullet hole to prove it. You see, because my brother read his word every day. 